Every Friday night throughout the year, the public is invited to embark on a long journey. In the blink of an eye, guests are transported from the Evanston campus into the depths of our solar system and beyond. It all takes place right here at the Dearborn Observatory, a place where Northwestern students teach us all about the stars. Take a walk up the creaky stairs, and you will find yourself following steps taken by scientists more than 100 years ago. This is a place where a roof opens to other worlds. It is a treasure. This is an example of the elegance of astronomy, the mapping of the heavens, the understanding of the heavens. And, and when the time when the observatory, this observatory was built, that was very much reflected in the architecture. This is the Dearborn Observatory, a building so nestled between buildings on campus, you might not even know it's there. But it's been around a long time. Mike Smutko is the observatory's manager and the inheritor of a rich history. The Dearborn behind me definitely contributed in a, in a large way in helping to map out the stars at the end of the, the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. Built in 1862, the telescope had a refracting lens of 18 and a half inches in diameter, making it, for a short time, the largest in the world. In 1887, the telescope was purchased by Northwestern, and two years later, it had a brand new home the Dearborn Observatory. By the early 20th century, the Dearborn was a hub. Astronomers came for major conferences, among them Edwin Hubble. Hubble discovered that yes, not only are most of the galaxies moving away, but in fact, almost all the galaxies are moving. Every single galaxy is moving away from us. Hubble discovered the expansion of the universe which he announced in 1929, but he was inspired to start that work by the talk that he heard here at Northwestern. In the 1930s, a new building, the Technological Institute, was about to be built on campus. So, to make space, the entire observatory was moved 100 yards to the south. So literally, they, they cut off the building at its foundations and they had a, a team of mules drag it to its current location. No doubt, while other telescopes have surpassed the Dearborn in size and power, this classic model has had one thing many others have not, access. Students can use it almost any time they want. Brian Mikolajczyk and Kelsey Wild are two undergrads who work at the observatory. Their job? to get everything ready for Friday night, when scheduled groups and the public at large come to see the stars. That means they have to know how to do everything, from turning on the power, to opening up the lens cap, to syncing the telescope with the computer. I was just looking through the course catalog and cosmology sounded really interesting. Um, so I signed up in the winter quarter and it was just really fascinating. It was really fascinating and something I'd never had an opportunity to really study before. So when the opportunity came up to work here, I jumped on it. We have classes where we teach our students not only to use the telescope, but to use the latest in digital cameras and computer processing techniques. And they learn how to take scientific quality data with our telescope. So what they learn here at the Dearborn, hands-on, they can take that with them to other observatories anywhere in the world. My name is Kelsey. Um, welcome to Dearborn. By nightfall, Kelsey greets the first wave of visitors. Upstairs, Brian is ready in the telescope room, lowly lit with red lamps that won't spoil the view. He explains the star system they're about to see is called Alberia. Binary star system is the two stars show up as different colors. The one on the left, I believe, is orange, and the one on the right is blue. And that corresponds to the two uh, stars uh, burning at different temperatures and emitting radiation at different frequencies, different energies. And does anyone know which, which star is burning at a higher temperature? Blue. Blue. Okay. You guys are good. <laughs> As the crowd grows, I, I so know. does the excitement. Yeah, Dr. Smucko might know that one. Oh, that's so interesting. Many here have seen images of star systems and planets in books or on the internet, but not through a 23 foot telescope that can absorb 9,000 times more light than the naked eye. It's different on a screen than it is to have somebody do what they did 100 years ago when they were discovering it for themselves. And you look through the same lens the same way somebody else did then, 
and it becomes much more real. Everybody, I have Jupiter in the main telescope. On this clear night, yeah, right. Jupiter is positioned perfectly for a sharp view. Oh, wow. That's awesome. To give you a sense of what everyone here is seeing, this is an image of Jupiter we shot through the Dearborn Telescope. Talk about a good telephoto lens. The light that you'll see from Jupiter traveling at 186,000 miles per second, it still took over 34 minutes to get from Jupiter to the Earth. And you know, that's our own solar system. So you should be getting a sense of how insanely large the universe is. For many yeah, who so make the trip to the like Dearborn, stripes, like the trip shirt. into outer space made through the lens of a telescope puts life in perspective. Anything dealing with the universe when you learn about it, it's a very humbling experience because you realize how tiny, not only you as a person, but the, this Earth, the solar system, even the galaxy is in the big context of things. So it's very humbling to be able to experience something like this. Odd, perhaps, that the skies and heavens above seem so inaccessible to many people most of the time. But this place, the Dearborn, with its open door and open roof, changes that and brings astronomy down to Earth. We're open every Friday night, year-round. Even on a, on a cloudy night, you can come and still talk to astronomers and visit the observatory. And there's no reason to shy away from it. It's something that's understandable to everybody and that people should come and take advantage of the, the great resources that we have here on campus.